I'm super excited to introduce our newest CKC member. She's gonna be on the panel. And then our second newest um, uh, CKC um, collaborator, um, partner, whatever you want to call it, um, is going to facilitate. So I'm gonna introduce them and then we will get started. Um, after they introduce, if we'll go, we'll go around and if you just want to say your name, your company, your role, and then what CRM system that you use or how long we've used it. Um, we are system agnostic here, so any of the topics are relevant to any system. Um, if you want to share what system you're using so that you can connect with other users that are on that same platform, feel free. So um, I will kick it off. Like I said, I'm Courtney Kearney. I've been using CRM since eighth grade. I had an internship at a construction company um, after eighth grade in between middle school and high school. They stuck me in a closet and said, you can type. So I entered all of this information from many, many binders. And um, I went back to work full time after college to that same construction company and went, I recognize this data. Sure enough, I had entered it when I was a kiddo and um, it got migrated to their CRM system. Other than that, I've been using um, platforms as a marketing um, professional for over 14 years. So I've definitely figured out some tips and tricks along the way that I'm happy to share with you guys. Danielle, would you like to introduce yourself? <clears throat> sure. <laughs> My name is Danielle Gray. Um, I don't know if I've met any of you before, but if I have, um, hi again. I do a lot of speaking um, within SMPS about content marketing and digital marketing. And basically what's happening here is CKC is a lot of you know, CRM experts and um, in data and all that good stuff. And if we wanna have targeted marketing uh, to do that, we have to have the right data. So it's really just a collaborative effort that marketing is actually going in the right direction. So um i am your moderator today and so i'll be asking these experts because i'm not i'm not a crm expert i'm a digital marketing expert and that's where that's where i live so um you know feel free to ask me questions as well but we're going to focus heavily on the crm uh user group experience so i'm excited to be here and i am Danielle, DG Marketing, that's all I got. <laughs> Welcome, we are converting you. You're a nerd in your own right. It's just I am, I, I get real nerdy about it. <laughs> Thanks. We're the content nerd, we're the data nerds. It's a great Yes, thing. exactly. And um, we're super excited to continue to bring to the market data-driven perspective. So um, Danielle joining the team is fantastic because her content is great. Her message about content is fantastic, and it only makes sense to have the content whisperer and the data loving marketer combine into one awesome superpower. So, speaking of superpowers and the awesomeness of the name Courtney, the newest team member is Courtney Vance. I'll let Hi. you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Courtney. Uh, I am new to the CKC team. I have a background of more than a decade experience in architecture, engineering, and construction marketing. And I've been working with, I guess, technically working with CRM systems since the start using rudimentary spreadsheets to keep track of proposals and whose resume was used, what project was used. Uh, but more recently, I was uh, using a CRM system with my previous employer and moved into a data management role and was doing that for several years. And I'm just so glad to be here. Fantastic. We are ecstatic to have you um, and have Courtney's plural unite. That's fun. Um, internally and our clients that we shared together, she goes by C Vance. So if you um, want to ask her a specific question, feel free to say Courtney Vance or C Vance or Courtney V or whatever comes out, we'll answer to. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go in order of how I see you on my screen and ask you to introduce yourself. Jody, you're first up, and then it'll be Jennifer, you and your crew. Okay, I'm Jody Bird. Um, my company is Giles Engineering Associates. Um, we are a um, 
environmental consulting, geotechnical engineering, and materials testing firm. Um, and I've been in the AEC world for ugh, um, a long time. <laughs> and um, I um, have worked with some really great CRMs in the past um, when I was at bigger companies. Um, the Microsoft, Microsoft Dynamics one is one of my favorites, but um, currently, since I'm at a smaller firm where they probably don't even know, they don't really, I don't think they really grasp the idea of what a CRM actually is. Um, I am using the free version of HubSpot and trying to make it work for my purposes, which is a little bit of a challenge. It doesn't obviously do everything that I want it to do, but I'm making the best of it because it's free. Absolutely. Well, welcome. And Jennifer. I'm Jennifer Batchelder with Micron General Contractors, and I have been using CRM systems for a very long time. Currently, we use Essential, and I have here with me Alan and Christy Wilson. Hopefully, you're all six feet apart. Um, <laughs> the, the next one to um, or introduce is Stacy. Hi. Hi, I'm Stacey Ho. I'm with WSP Marketing. I'm a data analyst for our West Coast Transportation Division uh, and uh, very happy to be so unique in my company to have a job still. Uh, we use, uh, for 50,000 people working at home, we use about a bazillion different projects and <laughs> systems, including Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, um, and several other homegrown items. So that's what we use. <laughs> awesome. Well, you definitely are the data expert as well, and we often nerd out together. So welcome to the conversation. Um, Stacy is also a past presenter, so if you want to go back to our website and look at her content, it's fantastic. She also has a guest blog spot on our um, website too. Amber, you are next on my view, and then Natalie, you and, um, well, I guess you're not with the group today, just you will be next. So Amber, if you want to unmute and introduce yourself. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, I had to call in on my phone and the video is not working. Um, I'm Amber Emley. I work at Carl Sanderson along with Natalie Price and Lindsay Stafford who are also on the call. We're just all at home. Um, we're a commercial construction company and we use Cosential and um, we've been using it. Natalie can probably tell you how long but um, I think since 2012. Natalie will have to correct me. That is a perfect segue. Natalie, you are next. I'm Natalie Price. I'm with Crow Sanderson and ditto everything Amber said and we have been using Coessential since 2012. Awesome. Welcome ladies. Thanks. Um, Lindsay Stafford. Hi, I'm Lindsay Stafford also with Crow Sanderson Construction. Um, also one of the many people in our CRM system. Perfect, welcome. And I think Megan is with y'all too. So Megan. Yes, um, I'm Megan Mergens from Krauss Anderson as well. Um, I'm on the proposal side for Krauss Anderson, but I get my team really into Coessential. So I work um, closely with Natalie, Amber, and Lindsay. Fantastic. It's exciting to see such a great representation from y'all's firm. Thank you for joining us. All right, Jean. Hi, my name is Jean Tupper. I am an associate engineer for Geotechnical Resources, GRI. We are in the position of figuring out what CRM to use. And uh, in, in an effort to do that, I knew Stacy was a vast resource of knowledge and so contacted her and she put us in uh, contact with this group. Um, also from GRI on the phone today is Christina Villeneuve, who is a uh, had been with GRI for a long time, took a vacation from us for a few years, and then came back. And she's going, and she's got experience with Cosential, and uh, she can talk about that some more. But she's going to help us uh, figure out what's the right software for us, a group of us are, and uh, see where we go from there. So exciting times! Excellent. Well, 
Excellent. Well, welcome. We're excited to have you and hopefully you can get some great insight onto all the different platforms today and some of our conversations. All right, Christina. Hi, I'm Christina. Um, I work with Jean over at Geotechnical Resources, GRI. Um, I was, this is my uh, week two. So very exciting to have all of these conversations. Um, at my previous firm, uh, I was using Cosential, like Jean said. Um, like Cosential, it suited our needs. Um, you know, we had a, a little bit of an issue with an accounting upgrade that made Cosential go dark. Um, we were using BST at the time. And then, uh, so moving over to GRI, you know, trying to make sure we understand some of those flaws up front and making sure everything's compatible with the systems we want to make make it work with and uh you know just trying to see what else is out there excellent well thank you for joining us all right it looks like i've gotten everybody that had put in your name if you just called in if you'd like to introduce yourself please unmute and do so all right speak now or forever hold your peace all right, so before I turn it over to Danielle to facilitate the panel discussion today, I do want to let you know that we have been talking about on our surveys and all of that, gamifying this conversation a little bit, and we are going to try it for the first time today. So for those of you that participate, so if you ask a question via the chat, or if you unmute and ask a question, um, or just have feedback, share tips and tricks and that kind of thing, I am going to write your name down and I'm going to put it in a bowl and um, we will draw a name for a Amazon gift card or Uber Eats or the gift card of your choice. So definitely be thinking about your questions and again, drop them into chat or um, unmute and ask when Danielle lets that opportunity come up. So Danielle, without further ado. All right. Well, you know, I realized that I should have included that I worked within AEC for 10 years. So I worked with Cosential. Um, I worked at a design build firm. So AEC is all I really know uh, professionally. So I think that's probably an important part that I did not bring up. So um, yeah. So anyway, thanks for having me. I am uh, just serving as the facilitator today. So I will start with uh, the first question. Uh, if you have questions that pop up, I will take those as well. But we have a couple of uh, pre-made questions uh, that we want to um, start the conversation with. So I think for both of you, um, both Courtney's, <laughs> Courtney's, I, I feel like, and also in mind, you guys are on both sides of me. So this is like really fun. Um, <laughs> so uh, can you, Courtney, Kearney, uh, can you talk to me about how did you even get to CRM in the first place? Like, you know, I know you said you started in eighth grade, but how did you make your way back? Yeah, good question to start with. Um, I obviously started working really young. Um, some people find out that I was in eighth grade. I was legal age to be working. I know that trips people up sometimes. Um, I was 14, so we're all good. Um, I have always had AEC in my blood. I grew up on a job site. My dad was a project manager. And this industry is really in my heart. And I knew that I would always be here. I just didn't know in what capacity. I had the CEO of a construction company as my mentor all throughout high school. And I asked him, like, hey, if I want to be in this industry, what degree should I do? I knew I wanted to go to AM, but what degree specifically, I didn't really know. So he said electrical engineering. If you can get through that, you can get through anything. So after about two and a half years, I said, I do not want to do AutoCAD and sit at a desk every day. Nope. So I took a career course as one of my electives and everything came back communication. So I graduated with a communication degree and came back to AEC to communicate for the technical staff. So I have that technical background and understanding. And with that, I just have always loved numbers and the data behind everything. So as a marketing coordinator, I always wanted the stats in my proposals, in my cover letters, in my executive summaries, so that I could chat, highlight that. And when we say things like, we are the number one healthcare for, um, construction, or number one healthcare GC in the DFW area, I wanted to be able to back that up. 
So um, with that, after um, I had my first baby and I came back, uh, they said, would you like to go part time? And really my job had been taken is really what happened is whoever was there didn't want to leave. And so they said, um, do you want to go part time and do this co-central thing? I was like, sure, I'll absolutely do that. And that was my for um, transition from marketing to full-time data. And then I stayed full-time CRM manager ever since. And that's awesome because I did not stay there. Um, so congrats, uh, kudos to you. And so, so C Vance, I'll call you that uh, today. So why, how, do, I guess the question is, what made you, feel kind of connected to the CRM. I think it takes us a, a, a kind of person uh, to be able to really be good at this. So what, how did you find your way here and why do you love it now? Uh, short answer is, is that Marie Kondo is kind of my spirit guide and I've always really loved organizing and things having a place. And uh, even in my days growing up in this industry as a marketing coordinator, I would do everything I could to kind of do some work up front to make my life that much easier down the road. Um, then um, in 2015, I thought about going back to school and I actually took some classes, uh, one of which was statistics and um, I was really good at it. I uh, got really, really good at Excel and um, happened to uh, have the opportunity to apply for a position uh, with the firm that I was working for at the time uh, to make a lateral move into the CRM side of the marketing department. And I have loved every minute of it. It's the best. You know, I'm so grateful for people like you guys. So grateful. So, um, so thank you for that. So I guess the next question is, and more so for our audience, especially those that have not really are kind of jumping into the CRM uh, space, is if, you know, if you've ignored your CRM or you're seeing that this is a good time to work on it, where do you start? Courtney, oops, Courtney and Steven. So Courtney, where do you start? What's the best place to start right now? I think that if you've ignored your CRM for quite some time and now your business developers find themselves with a little bit more downtime now that they can't network like they're used to and they say, let's focus on the data, definitely take that opportunity to say thank you. Yes, we need to. Um, without knowing what your goals are in your CRM, it's hard for me to specifically answer, but I think that a general assumption is that you are collecting contact information in your database. And with that becomes um, what I like to call orphans, and I don't like them in my system. So every contact that is in a CRM system should be owned by someone internally. If that is not how you have your data, I think taking the time to do that now is critical. So the reason behind that is that you want to protect your company assets, and a lot of that is relationships. So if a business developer owns or houses those relationships and they leave, you do not want those clients to go with them. You want them to stay loyal to your company. So to help that, if you have every contact associated with an internal person, if Jennifer is going to leave the firm, I can run a report that says here are all of Jennifer's contacts. Now, who's going to take them over? Are some of them Ellen's? Are some of them Christie's? Are some of them Charlie's? Who do they need to go to? so that you can protect those relationships. Now, it could be a simple answer is, Jody's gonna replace her, so Jody will get all those. Well, when that person comes on, they can introduce themselves to those contacts and say, hey, Jennifer left, I'm her replacement, I'm so happy to meet you, let's get together, let's have Uber Eats together on a virtual um, screen. Whatever that looks like, that is gold. So if you do not have your contacts, tied to an internal person, I would spend this time doing that. That's great insight uh, because I think having, because you don't want to step over or step on any toes. So that's, that's really helpful. So uh, C Vance, why do you think now, like we're going through, I mean, I don't know when the, this is going to end. This is like unprecedented times. We have no clue what's going on. So what, why do you think, you know, maintaining your CRM is important in, in this time? 
Um, <clears throat> so everything that we do in our industry is very collaborative and being able to work on that information that you might need from somebody else later on when business picks up again uh, would be very beneficial. Um, so pulling from my background as a marketing coordinator, uh, you know, right now the proposals may be slowing down. Now for me would be the good time to go back and look at that content and start putting it together so that when companies come back online and they start resuming their projects, you can really hit the ground running and start building up your, your revenue base again. Oh, that's a great answer. Um, <clears throat> and so I think that, you know, overall what I'm getting is we really need to take as much, you know, take advantage of this time uh, the best we can. I know that there's a lot, you can either be like super busy or, you know, you're finding that there's like maybe a proposal pause. Uh, that's what I used to call them. Like, I don't know what's going on, but I guess this is my time to work on some stuff. So um, that's a great answer. So let's get a little bit deeper into the actual data. So what are the most important data fields for a firm to track? Um, on a company contact opportunity project record, uh, Courtney, do you do you have su some suggestions on what the most important data fields are? Boy, do I! I could get on a soapbox about this. I will narrow myself down. I would definitely say less is more in a system. I'm sure Stacy can agree with me that, especially when you have many many systems running around your company, that you want to streamline them. What's important is to understand your process and what the end result is. That is the key to figuring out what, what fields that you need. So starting with, if you're implementing a system or trying to re-implement a system or clean it up, looking at what reports are you actually using? What reports are you after? If all it is is the name of the pursuit, the owner, the client, the dollars, then why do you have 20 extra fields? So really, it's about understanding how it's being used in the end, and that is how I would answer the question for what are the important fields. I don't know your company, so I can't tell you specifically that you need gross revenue versus um, invoice data. Like I don't know those specific answers, but I will tell you whatever the end result is, is what should be driving the importance. Thank you. Uh, C. Vance, do you have anything to add to that as far as what you've seen with the important fields or anything that sticks out to you? No, I completely agree with Courtney. It's all about starting with the end in mind, you know, whether your company is more focused on the opportunity data or the proposal content data, you know, really focusing on, you know, that information, narrowing down on what fields are important to you and, um, you know, going from there. Perfect. So um, I guess the, the next question is, and, and before I get into it, when Courtney and I first had a conversation about, okay, how are we going to work together with the, the digital marketing side and also with the data? And she told me what CRM was to her. I always saw CRM as an actual software. So Courtney, can you talk about what you, how you define it? Because I think it's a really cool way to define what a CRM system is. Absolutely. For me, CRM is actually managing relationships that happen to be clients. Funny how when you put it in a different way, CRM, it reminds you what it means. So it's client relationship management, and that means something different to every person. Really where CRM should start is process. What is your process of managing these, managing those relationships? And then you put the software or the system or the Excel or whatever outlook, whatever it is that you're going to use behind that process. I think a lot of times, especially our engineers want to start with the software first and then dive into, oh yeah, what is the process? How are we supposed to be using this? Or um, some of the younger generation gets all excited about something new or, hey, I saw this app or let's do this. Well, really, let's talk about how we're going to use it and then we'll figure out what we need to turn on and, and all of that. So really, process behind managing your relationships. That goes from start to finish. Where are you finding your leads? How are you nurturing those leads? When a lead comes in, what happens to it? Who's supposed to be updating that lead? When the lead hopefully converts to a win, who's supposed to convert it? How 
what happens with that data? Does it get sent to IT? Does it get sent to accounting? Who all needs that information? To marketing, because you know, marketing is usually the last one to know that we want a project. Um, so really thinking through, okay, now that we've won, how do I get all the information that I need to market that project? When we're at 25% of that project, where's that information? 50%, 75%, now I need to trigger photography for that project. All of that is process driven. And then you put a system or a software or whatever that looks like behind that process. Thanks. And now I have a, another question I just thought of just now is, so I know I was a part of the uh, co-central implementation team at my former firm. How do you, and I, I want to get both of you guys, uh, but I'm going to start with C. Vance, is what kind of people do you need on your team? Uh, and if you don't have them internally, what do you need on that team period to um, make sure that this all goes well? Because it can't be just the marketing coordinator, right? It has to be several pieces. So what's your thoughts on who needs to be on that team to really make it successful? Right. <clears throat> yeah, I can actually speak to this a lot. Um, the previous firm that I was at, we the CRM system was started, implemented, but it wasn't maintained very well. And over time, um, because the reliance was on uh, the marketing coordinators to input that data because of the proposal process going from one deadline to the next, it was often very difficult to get that information back in and get it back in accurately. Um, at the very least, uh, you would definitely need somebody that was actively able to run maintenance reports to look for those key fields to make sure that that information is being input accurately. Uh, you know, either on a weekly or a monthly or even a semi-annual basis, depending on what kind of data you have, just to constantly check it uh, to make sure that it's getting input correctly. Because when you leave it alone for several years, it, uh, it, it becomes uh, not so great. <laughs> 100% agree because I, I experienced that I'm like there's there's a lot of different um, not just uh, titles that need to be a part of it but actually personality types to to get things moving um, as well so um, you know that's a big deal for me because I know coming in as a you know in in the implementation team I knew that we were missing some of those pieces so thank you for that uh, we have a question Thank you, Stacy. Uh, so I'm going to just read it verbatim. Uh, so she said, I would love to know philosophies on, do you teach the fish? This is such a good question. Do you teach the fish, um, teach, teach to fish, training, access, accountability on your team and do the entry, or do you just feed them? Like, you know what, here, figure it out and see if it's right uh, because they're just way too busy. Uh, or is it a balance? What's, what's your thoughts on that, uh, Courtney? Can you speak to, do you just do it for them or do you train them out of control and hopefully they do it? Yes, I can definitely speak to that first. I just want to show there's Stacy's name and it's going in the drawing. So well done. And I, um, I think that it's a combination. I think that Quick wins are important whenever you're doing software or implementation or process or any of that. So if I need to get in the system and just do it for us to have a win, then I'm willing to do that. Now, do I want to do that for 20 years? No. So I think what's important is understanding that balance and walking the line of enabling and hurting your users. So I think that I can't say what that line is for your culture. I think everything is different. What I will say is the ultimate accountability is to find the person that holds the accountability and use them wisely. So a perfect example of this is when I was at a GC, my CEO cared about bonding. I was able to get the bonding capacity out of our CRM. And from that moment forward, he mandated that every opportunity be in Cosential or our CRM platform because if it wasn't, his bonding was incorrect. So on our Monday morning meetings, when marketing and estimating and business development were all together, if a hot to trot business developer came in and was like, look, I just talked to so-and-so, he would immediately cut them off and say, nope, is it in the system? If it's not, I don't wanna hear about it. 
because he knew that if he heard them out, it never would have gotten in the system and he would not get his data. So his accountability was gold. Now, back to your original question and that example, Monday morning was hell for me because the meeting was at 9 a.m. So all those fools were at my desk at 7.30 going, uh, how do I enter it? What do I do? How do I, you click edit. That is what you do. But regardless, I made sure that I was there or someone was there to help them through that process. So I think it's just understanding your culture is a big part of it too. Thank you for that question. I think that's, that's key, especially in marketing, because we're clearly uh, magicians in some way. So um, I have a, another question from the audience, Jody Bird. Uh, so, and I think this is, you guys tell me who, who wants to answer this, just jump on in. Um, but what are some ways to overcome CRM systems that are not customized for AEC, as we know that that, you know, is a big issue? Um, she said, I've made some deals into opportunities, but wish I had the option to just uh, plain leads that I would like to track versus opportunities and, and so on. So what, what are some ways to overcome that? If you can't do, can't get it co-central, what, how do we, and, and honestly, you have to, you have to customize all of these, but you know, what were some suggestions? See, Vance, I'll let you take that one because I think you can speak to that really well with your Excel wizardry. You're on mute. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so one way around it is to, uh, if you're going to do it in Excel, uh, you can use uh, different formulations. Uh, there's count if and count ifs formulas. Uh, there's where you can use multiple criteria to track whatever data you're trying to connect. It just, it, it kind of depends on, um, you know, where you have that data housed and your familiarity with Excel. But uh, I learned a lot of the formulas that I needed to to build those homegrown systems by just doing simple Google and YouTube searches to find how to put those formulas together. Was that helpful, Jody? I think that was that was really great. Anything else to add? I just want to make sure you're getting what you need. Well, I'm not you're you're talking about tracking it in excel versus um yeah i see the i i kind of see where i misunderstood the question so i think that like your example of redoing deals into opportunities the other way that i've seen it done is if you have any way to tie like associations to a contact that those can turn into opportunities like um if a call log for example or a timestamp note or something that you can report on is another way to kind of repurpose that as well. I know in Salesforce language, it's very different in how you can track those deals and opportunities as they go through the pipeline. Okay. Well, I just, of course, the, the, the struggle I have is I had, uh, you know, one of those fancy customized um, Microsoft CRMs that was awesome and had everything I could possibly ever want and it had a separate you know it had what what was called opportunities and leads which were a little bit different an opportunity was some you know a lead was just something some project you heard about that you wanted to track you know you kept a whole list, list of those leads that you were tracking um, you know kind of through the life of this project uh, and then the um, the opportunity is when it gets a little more serious, when you think you might have a chance to actually um, do a proposal on it, you know, it might get a little more tangible and you have a lot of leads versus less uh, actual opportunities and they're two different things. And in, um, I have HubSpot, so, and it's all based on people as potential leads. So, um, it's, it just doesn't work quite the same. It's, you can, it has something called a deal, which you can turn into an opportunity, but for all those random leads that are out there, you know, uh, all I've come up with is you might as well just track it on Excel, but, but that drives me crazy because I want to put it all in one place. I don't want to track it over here in Excel and then over here and then have other stuff in my CRM, but I don't have much choice. Before I open it up to the group, because I definitely want to hear what other people think, um, I've also repurposed the contact records to do that, or a company record, so that if you have an overall company record called long leads or 
potential leads or whatever that looks like that you don't necessarily have a specific contact for maybe that you could put that company record together and then the contacts that you put under that are the leads so the contact name would be elementary school eee or um any of that kind of stuff so you're you're repurposing the use of a contact record into an opportunity record or a lead record so that you can track it i'm curious what other people have to throw out there too yeah, we if you if you have any suggestions, please jump on in. Uh, but I think that was a really that was a really good suggestion, Courtney. Anyone else before I jump to our next question? All right. So Natalie Price, and we got a couple more. Um, so how do you continue to keep your novice, uh, not your everyday user? Oh, I feel like I'm I'm feel you right now, Natalie. Um, to become and keep keep them engaged and get them to have a, a renewed passion for CRM system. Um, anyone, anyone that wants to take that uh, C Vance, I Courtney. Passion. I think uh, Danielle might need to answer this question first. Well, you know, I, I was because I, I think that this is it's. Um, all right, let me let me back up. One is I talk a lot about passion. Uh, if you probably, I don't know if you can tell, I'm kind of. Um, a passionate person. But uh, overall, I think that it's very hard to, you, you can never push them or push someone to have passion about something. Uh, because if they don't have passion about it, then, you know, it just is what it is. What I do know is that what I try to create, especially when it comes to content, because it's very similar in that you need people to you have to rely heavily on the technical people. Uh, so I always say, what is it, what's in it for them? Um, and how can I illustrate how this is going to be very helpful for them? So, um, and, and I can only speak to my experiences, but for example, I have a very hard time, if you could imagine, getting um, any of my technical uh, people to write anything. Uh, God forbid a blog, right? They're not, they don't want to do that. So I can't get them to be passionate about it because they, they don't care. But what I can do is say, you know, this piece of content could turn into a case study that you could send to your uh, potential, you know, um, your potential uh opportunities and stuff like that so i make it very much about them this has nothing to do with you helping me because that clearly is not moving you enough so what can i do what are some of the outputs that we can talk about that would make them happy uh or in and or make their job easier that's what i would focus in on is like you know did you know that it could do this this and this oh wow well yeah we can't do that if you know, th this uh, this information or this data in here isn't right. So um, definitely focus on the outputs because any of the small details that you talk about, they just don't care and they won't care until it's something that they care about. I know that was a crazy sentence, but that's, you know, that's honest, um, at least my, my experience. I would add to that accountability. So yeah. what, I would, what we've also seen successful is if you tie it to an annual review, or if you can be really successful and tie it to a bonus money um, check so that they can't get something until they do something that they should or do anyway. Um, but that seems to be helpful too. So really explaining the why behind it. I need this because my CEO does this. I need this because leadership makes the decision about how we keep the lights on if you do this. So then that helps them understand. Now, if they feel like they're just filling out forms to do busy work, heck no, they're gonna be out. But if they know that I have to enter this because it keeps the lights on and my paycheck coming into my pocket, then I will do it. Does anybody else have anything? I mean, this doesn't just have to be us. <laughs> yeah, I, I just say big picture. Stay as, as big picture as possible. So, um, you know, for certain people, you just got to know there's different personality types and some people want all the details. Other incentives work too. And some people don't. Other incentives like gift cards and things like that help people participate in certain things. Y'all are doing great, by the way. Um, <laughs> Rewarding is important, I think, in some ways. But I also think it's a little bit of... Um, 
Like I always say this in my presentations when I talk about this, um, they want to be doctors. So you just basically let them diagnose all the problems with it. Like, uh, here's what I have. And they'll go, oh, it's totally wrong. You're like, yeah, I know. I know. I'm sure it's totally wrong because I have, you know, <laughs> and let it wash over you and then just take and take all that data and, and, and let them sort of tell you what's wrong with it. Right. Um, Stacey, I'm curious, um, is that question about customizing opportunities with a status or checkbox about what we were talking about before? Yeah, for Jody, yeah. It was just an idea for if we might be able to, if she might be able to just take that same opportunity record but add like one thing to it that says lead. Yeah. Don't know yeah, how customizable it is, but. Actually, that's a great idea, Stacy, and thank you because that that could totally solve my problem <laughs> because um, the free version does give you, um, you get 10 customized fields. It's a little limited, so I have to use them carefully, but that one would be worth it because I'm thinking in terms of something I used to use and how it was set up. However, there's no reason I can't go in and just make um, like a, a, a drop down. And, and in fact, I can think of more things to do with that. I can, make those, I can classify those um, deals, which I've turned into opportunities. They can be just a random lead. They can be an RFQ. They can be a fee proposal. They can be whatever I want them to be. And that will take care of all those different uh, types of um, opportunities that are out there. So that's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> this, is, this is why we do these calls, right? Exactly. All home moments are gold for sure. Yes, yes. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, because I I was lost for a second and came back and I I picked up that you already talked about the other question that you had uh, submitted. So um, about the customization. So I'm going to go to the next question. Um, what's your number one tip to keep clean data hygiene? Uh, C Vance, what's your thoughts on you know just that that number one tip? To, to clean up the data? Uh, well, I have two tips. Uh, okay. One is have clear uh, goals, intentions, processes, whatever you want to call them. And then the second part of that is be sure that with those intentions that you have maintenance reports set up to regularly check them uh, to make sure that that information is being upkept. And would you do that like a calendar invite to yourself just to yourself. remind yourself? Yes, I, I would. I would create a create a, a reoccurring event, and if other parties need to be involved, uh, you could also send that calendar invite to them, explain what it is, and say this is going to happen on uh, an every quarter basis, every month basis, you know, whatever the need requires. Perfect. Thank you. So I have a question because I I know that. Um, especially with the digital marketing side, it's really hard to communicate why this is so important uh, to leadership. So do you have, uh, Courtney, any suggestions on, you know, hey, I see that this is a benefit. You're preaching to the choir. I get it, but I can't get my leadership to buy in to getting a better system or even looking into this. Is there any suggestions you would, you could give them um, that's like, okay, how, how do I explain this to leadership to, so that I can make my job and life easier? Yeah, I think that that's um, a good question. I, on my other screen, am finding or looking for, I thought it would be easier to find, um, some blog posts that we did about exactly what Courtney just talked about with the um, maintenance reports and some really good ideas about where to start with that. So I will share that in the chat window as soon as I get my hands on it. And then, um, oh, here it is. So I think that when you say data reports, like some people are like, well, what does that even mean? Um, looking at those important fields that you have um, that you need for your reports. If you're running a report that says, show me all of my government projects in X area, if you don't have all of your projects categorized, then that report's never going to be accurate. So running a report to say, show me all of my projects that are not categorized, or show me all my projects that don't have a square foot, or show me all of my contacts that don't have an email, because if you are sending emails on a regular basis, um, email campaigns, 
if they don't have an email, they're not getting those campaigns. So really looking at that is important. So that, um, that blog definitely speaks to what Courtney just shared. Um, I got all my maintenance reports. High horse, and now I have to what you asked me. I lost it. Oh, no problem. No problem. I was just saying about leadership buy-in. Like, how do we get, yes, how do we get them to be bought in? I think it's about knowing what they need and filling a need. Leadership does not want to give you money for your problems. They just don't. They want to solve their problems. So figuring out what those are and figuring out how you can solve them with what you need is the golden ticket. So the, like the example that I used about bonding, that was critical. Another example is that I worked for a firm that um, had the, well, they hired me because they have this problem. Um, two offices submitted a proposal to the same client and the fees were different. So they said that can never happen again. The CEO got a call from the owner that said, so do we get the lowest bidder like amongst yourselves? Like, how does that work? Needless to say, they didn't get the project and they had a really hard time fixing that relationship. But I came in because I had the solution and it was a CRM system that did workflows and notifications. So all of a sudden, if you were doing a pursuit in a specific geography, all the surrounding offices got a notification so that you wouldn't be pursuing the same thing. So I think finding out, hopefully you don't have something that severe at all, but finding out whatever that little thing is whether it's they want to be able to do better projections or backlog or workload, whatever that looks like for your firm, I think is, is huge. <clears throat> That's so helpful because you actually, you, you said a lot there. Um, it, Cause it has to be about the leadership. It has to be, what are you doing for, for them that ultimately helps you in the end? Uh, so we are um, winding down to the last 10 minutes. Uh, so please, if you have any more questions, please submit them. Uh, but before we um, kind of close out, I do have a question for both of you guys. Um, what are some, you know, any last tips or anything to talk about uh, or like frequently asked questions that you come across uh, that you think would be really beneficial to this this experience for everyone? See, Vance, do you have any like, you know, frequently asked questions like, oh my gosh, like, I hear this all the time. Uh, we may have gone through some, but do you have any that you can address here? Hmm. So I, I don't really have any questions to address, but I do know the feeling of uh, you have so much data and it may be unclean and you're trying to get it into the system. How on earth are you going to get it all in the system? And uh, my tip for that is, is to remember that to eat an elephant, you have to do it one bite at a time and just start with the most critical pieces first and just pick a start point and go forward. And then once you get caught up on the things going forward, then go back and do your history that you need to clean up after that. Such a good tip here just for life and especially in the overwhelming um, landscape that we're living in right now is one piece at a time. Uh, Courtney, do you have anything that um, you would add here? I do. Along those same lines, I get that question a lot too, is like the overwhelm of, oh, I'm never going to get it or it's never going to be populated. Well, um, it never, I agree with you. It'll never be populated. It will never be fully finished. This is a journey. It is not a destination. Um, uh, at least I hope so, because if not, then your company is out of business because you want to always be having new data that you need to get into your system. So with that, I think that there is a healthy perspective to let's not worry about the history right now. Let's worry about what's important and go forward from this day forward. And it's a commitment of, I vow to take you CRM seriously from this day forward and enter my data. If that is where you're at, then be there. Do not try to put in a hundred years worth of history. And that is ridiculously overwhelming. Now, if you can commit to doing it moving forward, I think there's great habits like having it up on your second screen so that whenever that project manager emails you the new square footage for the same building for the 12th time, you can put it in your CRM and say, according to John, now the square footage of this building is three times larger than it was three years ago. So you can document all that and you can do it a lot quicker in the moment live. I promise you 
we have actually tested this. Um, Christina Leahy over at Cosential and I did this, we do this on the regular actually, over the course of our 14 year relationship. And it takes 60 seconds to have the data, click, type, search, copy, paste. Now, once you finish that proposal and you go to close it out, which no one ever has the time to do, but let's pretend like we have the time to do it. If you go to close it out, it takes at least two and a half to five minutes to remember who gave it to you. Where did it come from? Do I have pro approval or was this a made up fictitious number just for this proposal? Let's be honest, that happens. Um, and then it just doesn't go in the system because you're like, oh, I don't remember, but I better not put it in there. So if you do it live, that commitment to yourself alone is paying it forward exponentially. Not only is it paying it forward to yourself, it's paying it forward to your company, to your colleagues. I don't know how many times I got calls when I was a marketing coordinator from other offices saying, oh my God, you just saved me hours because you put that weird component in this project and I was able to use it. And I was like, well, that's cool. I did it for myself, but I'm glad you got you know, benefit out of it. And then they were like, well, now I'm sold. I'm going to start using the, the CRM. Great. So it spreads like wildfire when that starts to happen. Thank you. I think that, um, I mean, you guys knocked it out. I actually learned a lot and I hope that everyone on the call did as well.